like multiple feet of snow. Oh yeah, look at that snow now, dudes. Great test for everything I want to show you guys today. Girlfriend, comfortable? Can I get you anything? You need some hot cocoa? Let's drag this bad boy back to camp and then we're gonna get some smaller vertical standing wood too. We'll process that. Let's be chilling out more because those snowflakes are getting bigger and lighter. We'll check temperature here in a little bit. How you doing, dog? That seems to be about the right height. Temperature really is not that cold today. Around 31, 32 is all. I gotta remove these limbs. See how they're poking into the shelter? It's gonna pierce the side if I don't. Huh, time for a knife. Let's see, let's see, what knife are we gonna use? Let's use my work glove back on. Huh, lots of requests, lots of requests. Don't expect a super great review though. Cold Steel Bushman, the regular one, not the Bowie one. Let's give it a try. Reason is I'm not really digging it is because it's such a lightweight survival knife. But nothing fancy, you love lightweight blades. I do, to a point. A nine ounce hollow blade like this, and by the way, this has been reprofiled by Fitzen's Razor's Edge shop in Salt Lake City. Uh, nine ounce just is not going to heft very well. Plus, it's a, a non cushioned grip. I've wrapped it in athletic tape. I've had this one for a long time. Haven't used it really, but I know it's going to suck. It's kind of like you're seeing right here. See how many whacks it takes me to get through anything? That's inefficiency. But again, this is how I use blades. I mean, this is the environment that Allie and I are in. High alpine, snow environment. To me, this is the ultimate test for the kind of blades that I call survival knives. Okay? Cold Steel Bushman. You could do, a, you could do worse, but I should be able to fall this size limb off with a couple wax with a decent survival knife. Let me break out the Ontario Rat 7 by way of contrast. Hang on a second. Okay, there it is. The very much used Rat 7 by Ontario. One of my favorite mid-size survival knives by Nothing Fancy. Oh, what the heck is that? Is that Duracoat Nothing Fancy? Nope, that's something entirely different that we're gonna be testing today. This is done for me by an awesome TMP -er up in Washington State by the name of Brent. If I find his screen name, I'll annotate it. This is something that I'm pretty much unfamiliar with. He's an expert on it and he says that it might be able to uh, replace lubricating your blades with WD-40. It is by Dow Corning, it's called Molly Coat 3400A and it's a corrosion protective coating. Um, high lubricity and it's very technical. Lots of other things I may tell you later. Um, used in machine tools and now we're gonna try it with knives in the great out of doors in the nothing fancy snowy knife clinic with Allie the mountain dog. Yeah baby. Let's go see how this thing does. Okay now this is a medium size survival knife, medium weight. Not too heavy. 
but it has a lot more capabilities, is my guess, than that cold, cold steel Bushman does. Let's uh, lop off these limbs here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Probably not filming too good, am I? There we go. That'll be enough. Make a couple snow stakes for the emergency shelter, the tube tent. Using the Rat 7. Dow Corning 3400 Alpha coated. These are gonna have to be kind of long too. They don't have to be super sharp to go in the snow. Just a little bit. It's good enough. Real test for this coating will be splitting a very sappy wood. Two more of those. This is where the trail boss is going to rock. Delimbing. It's got good heft, good long handle. Uh, in this roll, it's going to be pretty much superior to most other things. Sawviver's still pretty good. Let me change hands. I'm off hand. I'm only one-handed, too. There you go. One lop, that sucker comes off. Awesome. These are semi-live. Kind of dead, kind of not. A couple won't hurt the tree. Let's see. I need to have strong stakes, so otherwise they're going to break. Might be able to get two out of that one. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, beautiful. Almost came out of my binding on that one. Dude, if my bindings didn't just break right then, I'm very impressed. Because I pulled that thing hard. Full force. Still holding together. The GZ snowshoe's pretty good. does seem to provide some lubrication on that blade, that coating. All right. Four stakes for the tube tent. We'll try this as plan A. Plan B will be still using the stakes, but we'll route a line completely through the side to stretch the tube tent out. I think plan A will work though. Trail Boss is pretty much gonna rock on delimbing duties. Just like any good axe would. It's because it's got great heft. It'll blow away a survival knife in that respect, that's for sure. Using a couple live bows for stakes. Not many. Very picky on how much live material I use. It's very little. I can get two stakes out of this. I'm gonna try. Hope I'm in frame. There you go.
great for a treat dog? Oh, she loves this. Chicken jerky. She loves it. What do you say? Who's that back up? WD-40 can. Come on, baby. Where is it? It's probably over there. There it is. Oh, yeah. Always bring two of something that's really important. All right. I need to prevent this from sliding down. So again, duct tape is your friend. Gorilla duct tape wrapped on a credit card should come with you on pretty much every expedition. I showed you that in the Urban Survival Kit. And to keep this sliding down, the guy string, I'm gonna do this, like that. Then I'm gonna have another cross piece of duct tape, like this. Solved duct tape rocks. Gorilla duct tape rocks. What do you think, Allie? There's a Colgan's tube tent set up at about 9,500 feet elevation. Yeah, baby. It's an emergency shelter, so it's not going to be like the bomb. Be real easy to guy out the sides to pull them out further. That will always result in more complications though, i.e. pulling on these ends. I'd have to anchor those ends on the top guy line better in order to do that. If it was really windy, actually I would do it regardless. Uh, I'm not going to probably spend the time doing it right now because lacking daylight again. I've got to get going on other tasks. There you have it. It's staked out in four corners. Another way you could stake it is just running a cord through the bottom like that and tying it from stake to stake and then you could pull it taut to pull that whole edge out and pull that edge tight. I did it the easy way and just staking the corners out right now. Okay, so that's what got going. Ran out of the cord it came with so I was using some outstanding PMI cord. I actually like that better than 550 cord because it stretches less. Coming around the other side of my emergency shelter that right there it'll provide wind protection a little bit of a uh, precipitation protection I could cut some of these boughs down easily and make uh, protections on each end as well I couldn't really lean them against there though because it just you know shred this this is not a really strong plastic and then looking inside dang that's no deep yeah a little bit of debris in here which is to be expected and then I could do all kinds of creative things like build a, uh, a snow dam on that side to prevent the ingress of uh, wind debris could actually build a fire on that side I think I want to build a fire over here like I said I'm not really situated in the shelter for um, you know fire orientation since it's plastic I want to keep it away from the fire uh, and the embers because the embers will burn right through it basically compromise the waterproof integrity of it but there you have a waterproof shelter it took me longer than I thought it would it always does probably about an hour to set up with the stakes cutting the stakes tying them in with the cord tamping down the site but it's going to be a lot faster than any other emergency shelter you can make and if you stake it out properly again you could do the sides uh, it'll be sufficient to keep you dry Here's the Adventure Medical Kits bivy bag, which I've talked about many times in video. It's always with me on day hikes, and that would for, form the core layer of warmth tonight, along with any other cold uh, weather clothing I have. I've got the Wind Challenger fleece there in the bottom, my Gore-Tex G2 
jacket, of course, and then uh, I've got a Gore-Tex bottom as well. Any, anything I could put on there. And then Allie would come in there with me along with her uh, sleeping pad right there. Her thermo rest, that's a mini one for her. It would all be in there together, staying as warm as possible. It's a survival shelter, but not a comfort shelter. Make sure you don't confuse those two things. They're two different things. If you want to be comfortable in the out of doors, bring a tent. Okay, let's get going. On the fire, that is. What you see down there, Doc? Cold and snowy in the mountains as the adventure continues. Allie the mountain dog, nothing fancy, scoping out some more firewood. Something that's gonna be more easily processed than that big old huge log. This stuff will work, but do you see a problem at all? This tells a story right here. See this right here? That's rain and snow, moisture. Since it's not at a vertical angle, it's leaned over, 45 degree angle, that moisture falls onto the wood and is soaked in. This top half right here is going to be full of moisture. Therefore, it won't burn very well at all. So since the bark's off it, it's really going into the wood, this is probably not the best choice. It would be workable, because we could use this wood on the bottom half for kindling purposes. But let's look around and see if we can find some vertical standing deadwood, alley. There's our survival shelter over there, see it? Easily spottable with that orange color. Again, guys will say, well just pick up dry wood and just burn that, like this stuff here. Um, it has a lot of moisture in it, guys. It just doesn't burn. I know from many years of experience. Uh, unless you put gas on it or a lot of trioxane and kind of build your own sustaining, self-sustaining fire chemically, it'll work. But uh, let's find something about this diameter that's easily processed. Vertical standing if we can. What do you say, dog? Oh, and check this out. Tripod totally busted. Standard piece of crap. So I'm just stabbing two legs in the snow. That's really slowing me down a lot, by the way. Taking the shot, setting the tripod up. It is a lot of work to do it. Look at how pretty that snow is, dog. Huge mound of snow right there. That's awesome. Temperature's dropping too. By the way, that's a Norse Hawk by Cold Steel. American Tomahawk Company, that's Cold Steel. That's actually a weapon tomahawk, but I'm curious to see how it will serve secondarily as a survival tool. I think they're freaking deadly as weapons. Tomahawks, they're outstanding. There's that Cold Steel Trail Boss too. Both of these excel in certain roles, in certain duties, they do great. And I hope to show some of that. Like delimbing, I think I said that already, if not, say it now they excel oh there's a nice one see that one over there that one right there let's go check that out look how deep the snow is man it's so beautiful out here love it okay that one will work see how it's got bark on it too that serves kind of as a a protective exterior We'll do that. I don't know if I really want to go through all the calorie expenditure of chopping it down. I'm going to go grab the saw viver and fall that sucker. Start processing it. Allie, go get me the saw viver. Do you know what that is? Can you go get that for me? Go fetch. Fetch saw viver. I need to train her how to do that. She's like, I don't know what that is, Dad. All right, let's go get it. Come on, dog. Get up. Giddy up, go on. Good girl. Go on. Good girl. Good girl. Go on. Like dad, it's not tamped down enough where I can run. It's too deep. Good girl. Good girl. Ah, oh, that's a good dog. That's a good girl. She really likes sitting on her uh, snow pad no dummy. She knows how to insulate herself from the cold. She's not a pussy. She's been raised in plenty harsh conditions, taken out in this stuff ever since she's a little pup. But she knows how to minimize uh, body heat loss since she's out here. 
Okay, let me get the saw viver, Dogness. On second thought, this isn't the best candidate. Here's why, that tree's leaning up against it. Once I fall this, I'm asking for problems right there. Oh well, let's go find another one. I got too much crap to carry. I'll leave it over there and come back for him. I don't want to be far either, dog. Let's walk over here and see what we got. That's where we found the big tree. I thought I saw some standing deadwood in here. That could work right there. It's still at an angle though. This kind of sucks. That sucks. It's quiet back here, dog. Not much noise. I hate to traipse too far away because it's more work without a sled to bring the wood back. Then you get sap all over your vortex, and your pants too. Incidentally, working the TR or the True Spec 24/7 pants for testing purposes. You'll see a separate tabletop. There's a short one that would work. I want a little bit more wood than that. Here you go, dog. There's some right there. Not quite vertical, close enough. And for the amount of daylight I got, it's gonna have to do for filming purposes. Let's grab that, bring it on back. Dog, I think this is a good candidate right here. This appears to be dead. I'll make sure though. Let me see. Nah, that's not dead. It's still alive. You can see buds on it. Keep looking. Looks like we finally found some vertical deadwood that will work. Uh, it's harder than I thought. Because the moisture content up here is so high. It's been raining, been snowing just like you see now. Therefore all the wood is soaked. The smaller diameter wood you get, the more that it's leaning to a side other than straight vertical, the more uh, moisture you're going to have to deal with in making your fire. Uh, speaking from experience, this piece right here should do okay. Let me swap my viewfinder around. There you go, right there. That is definitely dead. Bigger than I need tonight, but in a multi-day survival situation, I'd process this entire thing. So we're gonna fall that. I'll probably use a saw viver. Uh, mainly, I wanna play around too with a couple of these, uh, maybe the Cold Steel Trail Boss a little bit, and then I wanna try that Norse Hawk by Cold Steel. Oh, that snow is falling. What do you think about that, dog? You like it? Time for a fire, huh? All right, fall lines definitely that way. Let's start off with the Norse Hawk. I want to see how this will do. I know it's not going to do great. This is a weapon tomahawk mostly. better than I thought. Cut 
pretty good. Dude, that cold steel Norse Hawk is rocking. That pretty much rocked. That Norse Hawk, for what it is, it did really good. Pretty impressed with that Norse Hawk for chopping performance. It did pretty darn good. For as light as weight as it is, was it tw like 21 ounces or something like that? The Norse Hawk, decent. Wrapping that hickory handle with uh, athletic tape would help a lot. Now let's go delim with this sucker. you can see this. Nice. Very nice. I dig it. Let's see. It's hard filming this. I just sunk into like a four foot crevice. One of the problems I'm having is traction on the handle with the snow. It's going to kind of slide off if I'm not careful. Cold Steel Norse Hawk. Does pretty darn good actually. All right, dog. Let's cut this in half and we'll drag it.
efficient cutting right there. Minimizing calorie expenditure and honestly, danger to yourself, that's a saw viver. It rocks. Looks like Dogness has found a comfortable place to stay. Hey girlfriend, you comfortable? Can I get you anything? You need some hot cocoa? Anything at all? Yeah, it's a good girl. You can see those sides of that shelter weighing in. They really need to be guyed out. Bugs me. I might do it later. Right now I gotta get a fire going. to do one fell split. Yeah, baby, I like that. Oh, yeah. I think it's the wood too, this wood's really easy to split. Kind of rotten in the middle. This is not a good thing. Right now. Dow Corning 3400A coating on this Rat 7. Stuff's doing pretty good. It really needs a long term test to evaluate it. Temperature's in the high 20s now. Alley's staying dry in the tube tent behind me. I do have the Trail Boss axe with me, but for this finer kindling work, I'm finding that this is actually more precise, works a little bit better. God, this wood sucks. God, Allie, you chose a bad piece of wood. Yeah, I'll blame it on Allie. This wood sucks. It's not going to burn very long either. I'm debating whether I'm going to dig all the way down to the snow because when this fire starts, it's going to melt all the snow and turn it into water. Not good. I don't want to contend with that though. That's more work. Everything is work when you go snow camping. Everything is work. Nothing happens by itself. You've got to make it work with lots of effort. You can survive alone in conditions like this, but it is very tough. Just building a fire is a huge amount of work. Preparing the wood, getting to dry wood, 
in four feet of snow finding or actually making a fire platform which I'm doing now all of it takes an extreme amount of energy even more so when you're testing all kinds of different stuff like axes and other high exertion stuff platform that's what I'm opting for Either that or I dig down four feet to the ground with a snow shovel. I'm not really up for that either. Either way, it's going to be work. Either way. Actually, I might be able to use that as is. I'm getting tired. Way tired. Alright, let's check. Cold Steel SRK and San Mai 3. These are the kind of conditions this knife will excel at. Temperature's falling, about mid 20s now. Time to quit fooling around and start a fire. Got most of my prep work done. Since I'm not fooling around, I'm going to use a full bar of trioxane fuel. My favorite fire tender in the world. Like I've said to you guys many times before, I'm going to use a UST Sparky to start it. This is a great fire maker. There it goes. There goes the trioxane. It is on fire. Start stoking the fire. Usually start putting bigger pieces on so they can start drying out and catching on fuego themselves. Oh yeah. The whole outlook changes when you have a fire in these conditions. I'm lucky right now that the wind's not really picking up. If the wind was picking up, I might have to build a fire shelter. Or a wind shelter. Not super quality wood we're working today. I think I told you that. To get it to the self-sustaining phase might be a little bit of a challenge. High humidity day, 25 or so degrees be my guess. Let me check the thermometer here in a bit. knocking all the excess snow off of it so that I don't introduce water into the fire. I want it to be as dry as possible. No matter where I go, the snow follows, or the smoke follows me. That's more like it. Hey dog friend, we got a fire. So far. I'm worried about when it gets bigger melting down into that snow. Dry out that wet wood. It is self-sustaining now. And now I can build a drying rack and start drying out my gloves. Maybe my other wet gear. Think about that fire, dog. 
Stay. There you go. Stay. Hey, dog friend. In our emergency shelter. It's that that. Not that it's an emergency, but it's good to practice putting up once in a while. Sucker needs some guidelines on it, though, big time. I will say this, goal accomplished. We got shelter, we got fire, I have food with me. I could set some traps in the area. I'm not gonna go into that tonight. Um, but that's kind of a long-term survival thing if I'm planning to stay in the area. Two most important things are accomplished tonight. Extra wood, more that needs to be processed. It's always ongoing work. Out here in the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Look at that view out there. Allie, there's not too many folks up here tonight. I think just you and me. And it pretty much rocks. Be cooler if we had a buddy with us though. Other than my 64,000 friends that are with me right now, I appreciate those guys. Fun. <laughs>